Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We're back once again with another amazing science tutorial video. I'm Coach Spivey, joined with my son, Jordan Spivey. And today, we're going to be looking at Newton's first law of motion, also aka known as the law of inertia. Let's get started. So first, before we go into the law of inertia or the first Newton's first law of motion, let's talk about force. And force is a push or a pull that one body exerts on another. Everything is exerting a force on everything else. So for example, there's two types of force. We have this push, we see the man pushing on this object, and then we have a pull. When you have a push or a pull that is unbalanced, it causes motion. So let's take a look at balanced forces. And these are forces that do not change the direction of the object being pushed or pulled. Why? Because the net force is zero. That means the object is not in motion. So for example, students pulling with the same amount of force in tug of war. So if you look at this bottom left picture, we have some students pulling with 500 newtons to the left. And then we have some students pulling with 500 newtons to the right. And so what ends up happening is that the force that they're pulling with ends up canceling each other out. So 500 minus 500 ends up giving us zero newtons of force. And when anytime you have zero newtons of force, that means the object is not moving. And then you take a look at this book on the desk. There's an amount of force that's pulling down on the book, which is called weight or gravity. And then there's a force that's pushing back up on the book that's coming from the table. And so since these forces cancel each other out, there is no movement by the book because there's a net force of zero. And then if we take a look at it right here, we have two newtons of force going up, two newtons of force going down. That cancels out to zero, zero newtons of force. And then we have five newtons of force pulling to the left or going to the left. And then five newtons of force going to the right. Five minus five gives us zero as well. That means that this object is not moving. There, are net, there is a net force of zero. And I put NF equals zero. Now let's take a look at unbalanced forces. And an unbalanced force is an unequal push or pull which causes an object to move. So for example, pushing on a big box and it moves. So if you can apply more force to the box than it applies to you, then the box is going to move. And if we look at these examples that we have below, we have one person pulling with 50 newtons of force to the left and another person with th pulling with 30 newtons of force to the right in this tug of war game. So if we look, we have 50 newtons minus 30 newtons. That's going to give us 20 newtons of force going to the left. So that means the person on the left is going to win that tug of war game. And then if we take a look right here, we have a bird that is diving or moving down and you have 16 newtons of force going up and you have 25 newtons of force going down. Overall, you're going to have nine more newtons of force going down. So nine newtons going down when you subtract those two forces. And then if we take a look right here, we have three newtons of force pulling or pushing this cart to the left. And then we have four newtons right here, and then another four newtons. So really we're looking at eight newtons of force going to the right. And then we have three newtons of force going to the left. And so overall, we have five newtons of force going to the right. Why? Because there's an unequal push or pull to the right. And then if we take a last a look at our last one, we have this rocket ship right here. And so there is 300 newtons of force going up. And then we have 100 newtons of force going down. So that's going to be the weight or that's going to be gravity. And then when we subtract the two, there's going to be 200 more newtons of force going up. So that's why the rocket ship moves and that's why it goes up. And then if we take a look at balance versus unbalanced forces. Once again, 300 newtons to the left and then 300 newtons to the right. And that's going to give us a balanced force, which is going to give us zero. That means that the rope is not moving and the people can't move because the rope is moved. There's a zero balance of force. And then if we look right here. 
The people on the left hand side, they're pulling with 400 newtons of force to the left. And the people on the right are pulling with 300 newtons of force to the right. So who's going to win? Of course, the group that's pulling with 400 newtons of force to the left. Why? Because they are pulling with 100 more newtons of force to the left. So let's now look at friction. And friction is the force that acts on a moving object to slow it down and bring it to a stop. So if you notice, this man is pulling to the right. And then there's a force that's opposing this man. And this invisible force is the force between the box and the ground. And this is that frictional force that you feel or see when you're pushing a box and, and it stops. And then if we take a look, here's static friction. Static friction is the friction between two or more solid objects. So you have a book sitting on the desk. And that static friction, the book is not necessarily moving. But if you did try to push it, it would be a certain amount of force that you would have to overcome in order for the book to move. So let's look at some other types of friction which we have sliding friction, which is the resistance created by two objects sliding against each other. So for example, pushing a book across a desk. And another example I have up here is a car sliding in ice. And we all know that ice has very little friction. So let's take a look. If you notice, these people are trying to stop the car from moving, but since there's very little frictional force with the ice, then it becomes very hard for these people to stop this car. Why? Because the ice has very little frictional force, plus the car has a certain amount of mass that overcomes the force or the push that the men are trying to apply to the car. And then if we look right here, we have rolling friction as well, which is the force resisting motion when an object such as a ball, tire, or wheel rolls on a surface. So this is the force that eventually causes a car to come to a complete stop. So we have the tires on the car, and then we have the road. So the tires on the car interact with the surface of the road, and this eventually causes that car to stop due to rolling friction. So now to Newton's first law of motion, AKA the law of inertia. And inertia is the tendency of an object to resist any change in its, mo in its motion. So for example, an object will remain at rest unless acted upon by an unequal force. So if you look at this picture right here, the young man is able to quickly pull the tablecloth from up underneath the plate and the cup and the candle. And the reason why he's able to do this is because objects want to remain at rest. So that's why he's able to do it quick enough with the, while these objects remain still. And then also a moving object will continue moving unless acted upon by an unequal force. So let's look at this lady riding this motorcycle. So she's riding, riding, and then she's opposed by a force. And notice how she continues to move forward. Why? Because there is nothing that's stopping her forward progress. So if she was to hit a brick wall or if she was to have a seatbelt on, then she wouldn't have flipped off the motorcycle like she did. Let's take a closer look at Newton's law of inertia and objects, specifically objects in motion. And now let's consider an object in motion. If there's no force acting against it, a moving object will move in a straight line indefinitely. So for example, if you were in a space and threw an object from a space station, it would move forever due to inertia. And since there is no force to oppose it or against, go against that moving object, it will just continue and continue to move. And that brings us to our next topic, seat belts. And a lot of people wonder, why is it important for me to wear a seat belt? Well, seat belts can exert forces to cause passengers to slow down at the same rate as the vehicle. Why is this important? Because if you are traveling 60 miles per hour and if you were to run into another object or into another vehicle, if you didn't have a seat belt on, that means you would be traveling at 60 miles per hour, possibly out of the window, which would probably break every bone in your body and kill you. So my question to you is, how does a seat belt exert force on us? So let's look at some more examples of inertia and let's also look at why is it so important for us to wear a seat belt. So I have four examples for you to look at. So let's take a look at this first one. So one vehicle hits another vehicle. Notice it causes that man to fly out of his truck. Why? Probably because he's not wearing a seat belt and I know he's not feeling too good right now. Let's look at our second example. Notice this man doesn't have a seat belt. His car starts to move. And all of a sudden, he is pushed or thrown into the back seat of his vehicle. 
So no seat belt on, nothing resistance, resisting his flow of movement. And he goes into the back seat of his vehicle and his back is probably going to hurt. Then let's look at our next example. The man and the woman on the right have their seat belt on, but look at the lady on the left. She doesn't have her seat belt on and clearly she's in a lot of pain right now, which she's probably not happy with that. So let's take another look. People on the right, seat belt. Lady right here, no seat belt. And she's not feeling too well right now. Why? Because she didn't have that seat belt on to oppose her motion. And then let's look at our last picture. This guy right here has a seat belt on and the girl beside him does not. And since she doesn't, he stops suddenly and she hits her face on the dashboard. So let's look at that again. Seat belt, seat belt. No seat belt. And she hits her face on the dashboard and he laughs when she does it. Now it's time for your check for understanding. And you're going to answer the following questions using your knowledge of Newton's first law of motion, aka the law of inertia. I'll be walking around from desk to desk to ensure that you are understanding the concepts and answering your questions appropriately and properly. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Coach Spivey, signing off with my son Jordan Spivey. I hope this video tutorial was helpful. Peace. Have a wonderful, awesome, positive day. Thank you.